Hi folks, welcome back. This is session 12, um, Marco Chen Monte Carlo. So we're going to continue uh, talking about different uh, algorithms for doing more robust sampling. And now we're going to focus on the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. So this algorithm is a, a more advanced uh, version, if you want so, to call it like that, of our Gives um, algorithm. The overall idea is as follows. So assume that we have this chain. So th there is some Markov chain that exists in, in some uh, state space, right? And this state space are our X that we are moving from. So we are going to be moving from X to X prime and then from X prime to X P prime and so on and so forth. And we will have some proposal distribution Q X prime given X. That is our way of moving from X to X prime, okay? And this, this proposal distribution can be um, anything you want. And depending on these distributions, you get different uh, versions of the algorithm. For instance, if you use a normal distribution around the current sample or the current state, what you get is a random walk metropolis hasting. Uh, meanwhile, if you use independent samples, that means like your proposal does not depend on, on X, you get independent um, sampling algorithm and when you have some proposal that is the full conditional of a, uh, of the next state that depends on all except the current um, feature you get a gives distribution such that you maintain uh, the states between uh, the, the 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 previous and and the next state you maintain the the um, the different features that you want to, to compute. And how this works is that you want to go and use some rejection um, ratio, okay, or rejection value. And as we did in the rejection sampling uh, algorithm, what we are going to do is just go take some sample from the uniform and if this sample is less than that ratio, we accept the, the motion and go to X prime. If it is not, we remain in X and continue doing this state. And this metropolis hasting algorithm works because what we are proposing is, um, is that this proposal distribution over here corresponds to the, to the Markov chain such that our distribution of interest is a stationary change, okay? So after doing these changes for a long time, we will converge to that particular distribution that we're interested in, okay? So how do we compute this acceptance uh, probability? If we have a symmetric proposal, that means that it is uh, the same from X to X prime and vice versa, then we will take the minimum value between one and the ratio of the next state over the current one, okay? If it is an asymmetric one, we need to do some correction. It is just called the hasting correction. And what we do is to take the ratio still between both uh, next state and current state, but we correct it by dividing with respect to our proposal. So we use the probability of the proposal, so it is the ratio between the probability of, um, of the distribution that we want to over the proposal, okay? So that is what we call the, um, the correction. Mm -hmm. And this idea is like a mixture of, um, of the, the algorithms that we saw before, okay? Now, it has some um, conditions that you need to, to be aware because, for instance, as I was saying, that this converges uh, to the stationary um, chain that is our, in, our in distribution of interest, right? So to do that and to, to converge to that stationary distribution, we need for these samples to long for a long time, okay? So we need to maintain what, what it is called a burning phase, okay? And this burning phase, what it, what it is doing is to just let the chain run and after some amount of time, you can start taking samples. So those uh, samples at the beginning are not useful to you because they are highly correlated from the starting point and not necessarily 
from the chain that you were running on a key. Uh, for how long? Well, uh, <laughs> that is a, a, a kind of a hard question to answer, but commonly we just use 50% of the chain. So let's say like if you said that you, you are going to run these for uh, 100,000 iterations, then you just take the 50,000 later uh, samples to, to arrive to, to that uh, uh, particular number that you are interested in. But it's really hard to, to tell for, for, how, um, uh, for how long should you run it. The other uh, approach to take is to run several chains. And so instead of running just a single one, you do several iterations and then you, you take um, the samples from them, okay? Um, another another uh, way of, of um, working in this Metropolis Hastings is to use some auxiliary variables. What you do is to add some dummy variables such that it is easier to sample from this joint distribution over here, okay? Now, the problem with these type of methods is that defining easier, it's kind of tricky, okay? So it will depend a lot in the problem that you have and how to solve it, okay? I would recommend you to check the book. There are really nice examples over there. Then you can go and read and, and see what the idea behind it. But in practice, it's really case by case. How can you solve this? And another method that is really interesting um, and useful extension of this one is doing the slice sampling. And what you want to do in this case is um, when you have some univariate but multimodal distributions, yeah, like this one, what you want to do is to create some auxiliary variable, like extending this, uh, this idea. So if this is your x, you will have some, if this is your x, you will have some u, and I cannot paint in here. Okay, you will have some u such that you are going to spread out if this, if you see this is my uh, 1D distribution, right? Let's say like for this slice, I want to spread out this probability on this um, dimension over here. So I will have a 2D uh, dimension that when I marginalize with respect to view, I obtain my original distribution over here. And this works because when you do the, the marginalization with respect of um, this definition of u, that is the inverse of the normalization uh, constant, you obtain back the um, unnormalized over the, the normalization constant and that gives us the original distribution. How does this work in practice? Well, what you do is like you take one sample and from that particular sample, uh, xi, you go and randomly select a, uh, in, in a uniform, this, from a uniform distribution, one value within this, this space. And then you select um, some other sample from this uh, other slice. So what you're doing is that you're kind of changing uh, slices between the horizontal and, and the vertical. And then you jump between the, the different distribution and the different modes as long as you keep doing this, this chain over here, okay? So again, these sampling algorithms are really intuitive and really easy to work with, but uh, they have a lot of inner workings that you need to be aware of to, to make them really, really work. So I, I, I urge you to go and check the, the book to, to see more examples, and hopefully we will see this running in a more complex uh, examples later on, okay?